Uh, kia ora tato. Hello everybody. Thanks very much, Alison. Um, great to be here for this first event. Um, and I must admit, I was a little concerned when I got asked to come and speak at this um, on uh, giving a business perspective on, I guess, social impact and social good. Mainly because I saw the list of people who were here um, and thought, uh, crikey, there's a lot of people here who probably know a lot more about this than I do. Um, uh, and then the second uh, reason was actually there's a lot of people here who've seen me speak before. So, oh my God, <laughs> I've got to think of something new. Um, uh, so, um, look, so I, as, as Alison said, I, I have HR. Uh, in Vodafone um, and also uh, chair of the foundation and usually not always but usually we put those things together um, because the foundation for us is is critical to our people uh, and our experience and it's more about who we are as a business than it is about the business if that makes sense uh, and, and so um, it's a core part of our sustainable strategy I guess uh, uh, the foundation is 25 years old um, globally this year, and um, we have foundations in lots of different countries. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it's born out of a, a general belief that um, uh, a healthy community is therefore a breeding ground for healthy customers, which is great for business. Um, and, and, and we are a long-term investor. So you know, it's not cheap and it's not easy to build out big telecommunications networks. So that's a long-term investment. So it's kind of I just it's it's part of the fabric, I guess, of of, of the business and how we work. Um, so for those few of you who haven't heard about the foundation and what we do, I thought I'd very quickly give you an overview. It's about two two and a half million dollars a year uh, that we give out, um, but the money is really a vehicle. Um, it's not really about the money that we give out. That is, um, I guess, the, uh, that's the honey to attract uh, and find great people doing wonderful work um, uh, in the social sector. Because um, really, the, all that is is about us generating relationship um, uh, and partnership uh, uh, with people ongoing. Uh, and really, our core strategy is how to leverage the power of Vodafone. Uh, and that's pretty broad. So it's from the technology, the products, the services, the communications, but through our people. You know, we're a large corporate, so we have lawyers and accountants and all sorts of people. Uh, and so we try to bring that to bear. And our strategy and our focus is, is really vulnerable youth. Um, and, and we have a vision that we'd like every young person to live a life they value. Uh, and, and so that really kind of fuels uh, what we do. And, and that's the space we've been in for 10 years or so, um, uh, hence why Quite a lot of you are probably bored of hearing about it. So I'm going to move really quickly on. Um, so how do we start to bring some of that to life? Um, there's a bunch of stuff here. I'll give you a few numbers. About 2,500 hours of volunteering um, uh, over the last few years. Uh, so we have a policy that every member of staff can volunteer for up to two weeks for um, a charity of their choice. Double your dollar, about $170,000 um, in the last year where we match funding. So somebody raises money for a charity and we'll match that. Um, World of Dif Difference Business Unit Challenge. There's a number of World of Difference recipients in the room uh, or who have been involved uh, in this program. Um, and uh, about three years ago, we said, how do we really kind of ignite the business so that all of our employees get to meet these wonderful people doing fantastic work in the community with young people? And we had this idea of a business unit challenge because we're quite competitive. So we. <laughs> We compete different functions against each other to say, um, can you, well, first year it was, can you raise, who will raise the most money uh, for that charity? But it's kind of moved on to who can, who can have the biggest impact for that organization. Um, so in volunteering, in mentoring, in support. Uh, so last year, technology, for instance, did a hackathon and basically redid the technology for one of our partners. And uh, so lots of different stuff, pretty cool stuff. And about a quarter of a million dollars raised in three weeks um, every year um, for charities out of that from our staff. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and business mentors. So um, we have a, a kind of a relationship through CSI. We have a relationship through our foundation partners. We provide board members. Um, we provide consultant support, we provide strategic planning advice. Um, probably the most common is, oh my God, it takes me three months to do my accounts because I'm not very good at it. And so lend an accountant for a day and it kind of it takes a lot of that effort out of it for our partners. So lots of stuff we do like that. Um, so that's my very quick wh whistle stop of the foundation. Um, but I thought, what can I do to share with you some different stories about how business 
can have a real social impact. And I thought, I'll pick stories actually from around the world, because you'll have heard my New Zealand stories. Um, so uh, I'm just going to share with you how, how we take that power of Vodafone and try to bring it to bear for some different kind of social issues around the world. So the first one here is an app um, I have on my phone, actually. Um, uh, and um, it's called Dream Lab. So this was launched by the Vodafone Foundation in Australia. Their focus is health. Um, you know, our focus is youth, um, and they have uh, partnered with the Garvin Institute, who's a, you know, a, a very established, um, uh, preeminent cancer research uh, institute in Australia. And what Dream Lab is, is it's an application, and you'll see here, a lady in bed and her phone plugged in. So lots of people plug in their phone at night to charge. As soon as your phone hits 100% charge, the Dream Lab app switches on. And what it then does is, this is basically crowdsourcing computer power. Uh, it then breaks up very, very complex um, uh, data algorithms that the Garvin Institute are using to try and solve cancer research issues. And it breaks them into small problems and puzzles. And it downloads it to your phone. And your phone solves the problem and uploads it back into the Garvin Institute. So rather than going to IBM and spending a lot of money and getting six months of the uh, IBM supercomputer, <laughs> it distributes it um, across multiple smaller computers. Uh, and so for every 1,000 people that log on, that's 30 times faster the processing power for the Garvin Institute. There's currently 60,000 users. You can choose which research you'd like to support. If there's a particular area of cancer you'd like to support, you can download it here. Uh, we'll be kind of launching this later this year. Um, but you know, a really simple idea. Uh, rather than take one really big piece of data analysis. So, you know, uh, an example, because um, people always say, what's a real example? Um, so it's part, they're part of the Genome Project. Um, lots and lots of people given in their um, DNA, and they're running checks to say, have you got this gene for this cancer? So download it to your phone will be a little genome sequence. They'll run a test against it, and then the data will go back positive or negative, et cetera. So you know, lots of different examples like that, or, um, or calculations. Um, so really neat little um, app, really actually relatively simple, you know, really simple for kind of a Vodafone type business, but huge impact, you know, and is rapidly speeding up uh, cancer research across the world. So the idea is now to link cancer research institutes. Next one, uh, TechSOS or Tech SOS. Um, so again, this was um, actually Spain. So uh, first started in Spain, um, uh, and uh, and they had a um, it actually came out of a business uh, um, uh, conversation, an issue that they were dealing with, but domestic violence. So uh, victims of domestic violence um, often uh, repeat. Uh, so get themselves into a cycle and are caught in, in a, a relationship where there are repeat offences, and those offences often escalate. Uh, and so uh, the Texos product, um, which I've uh, unfortunately for five years failed to be able to get New Zealand to take, but anyway, um, uh, is really simple. So uh, a victim of domestic violence um, gets a phone, and on the phone there is a button uh, which is put on that phone for uh, these particular... Uh, women, because um, this is a, a product for, for women uh, particularly. Uh, if an incident happens, they press the button. Uh, and what that does is it automatically, 24-7, contacts the police. Um, but the really clever thing is, uh, is really two things. It opens a continuous channel and records everything that follows so that there is evidence. Um, and it <coughs> sends the uh, location to the police. Uh, and it's um, because, of the, because of the way it works, it's a priority call, uh, and that means the police can respond uh, and therefore prevent um, a, a serious escalation. Uh, so there's now 22,500 um, uh, users across five countries uh, who are using this, um, and, uh, and it's, it's saved many, many lives. Um, uh, so, you know, another really, again, it's quite a simple solution, but for a, a very big need. And then this last one, um, I thought I would share because it's probably very topical and I'm sure lots of you have heard of big data. Um, and this is um, probably a more controversial use of big data, um, uh, uh, but one we're still pretty proud to, to be involved with. Um, so, so we have a partner organization called Flowminder. 
um, that we work with globally. So I don't know if many of you know, it's an NGO. It's made up of academics um, from different institutes around the world. And their purpose is to use big data for social good. Um, and in particular, they focus because some of the biggest data sets you can possibly get is on telcos. So they work with, with um, uh, a few telcos around the world, but mainly Vodafone, um, on how to use big data for social good. And we got a call, uh, actually, I think it was from, uh, from the UN um, in Africa <coughs> through Flowminder, Flo, Flo say, when the outbreak of Ebola on the west coast of Africa, um, can we help? Uh, and so what we did was we took the data from 150,000 cell phones um, in West Africa and we ran uh, models with Flowminder to uh, map population migration uh, and travel plans. So where were people going? And out of that, we could predict where Ebola was going, which meant um, we could take then combined action uh, around West Africa to manage the, both the treatment setups, the treatment centers, where resources went, um, where there was um, uh, uh, the use of, of uh, uh, screening, but also to manage travel. So they actually stopped travel between certain places to try and stop the flow. Uh, and this was the core part of how they stopped the outbreak in West Africa, um, the use of that data. We also work with Flowminder in Kathmandu after the earthquakes, uh, and we're talking with um, uh, uh, the government here. Uh, about different applications of this, particularly in disaster. Uh, you know, so where have people gone to um, so that you know where to put resources? One of the big issues in Christchurch uh, was uh, lots of the aid turned up and it went to the centre of city, but everyone had gone. Um, so where have they gone? Um, and so you can provide resources and support. You know, business has a lot of resource and business is full of people with deep values and social um, uh, care as well. And there's often this view that business is different. Um, and I think, you know, it, actually through conversation and opportunity, there are some really exciting things that, that, that we can do if we can bring our resources together. That's me.